And I think Man City have got a blueprint now to deal with these kind of counter-attacking teams where they're just going to keep the ball. It may be boring to watch, but they're going to keep that ball till sunset. So, yeah. Different. I, I think I think Liverpool have a good chance against this Man City side. I think the different the the, the the difference between Liverpool and Chelsea. I think Liverpool's intensity. Uh... Spartans, what is your profession? <laughs> yes, people. Another edition of Nights of the Roundtable discussions where we discuss all sports all the time. Got my guy, the truth, with me. How are you doing, sir? Great week, guys. Great week. Ah, uh, dear. I, I, I can't believe you're wearing that scarf as well, bro. I um, Normally, you know, I don't promote getting these kit, but I got this kit off the black market, so no money goes to all the And in, in case people think I've been hypocritical, all black market stuff, guys. All black market stuff. No money is heading towards those flipping crooks in charge of our club. The man's just putting himself in a compromising situation. You know, if MI5 is watching this, bro, I'm looking for hey. looking for tooth. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, and the fans, if you want the plug, tooth is the guy to get you hooked up. All the way from Siberia, bro. Exactly. Hey, they, they, they've got real life Inuits and stuff working on these <laughs> on, on these knitting night and day. <laughs> oh, man said for that 1p every four hours, bro. <laughs> but, um, yeah, yes, people, you can see the truth is in a good mood. I think, um, unless you've been hiding under a rock, I think you know why. But, yes, it is for you, chat. We're back again. Another episode of talking all things football, all the current affairs going on, um, especially, obviously, the North London Derby, which we will get into. But people, as usual, before we start, make sure to like, share, comment and subscribe to the channel. Get them likes up, get them subscription up, share, share, share. We are here. And don't forget to join our social media pages as well. Links are in the description. Um, we may or may not have people joining us. I don't know what Mr. K.A. is saying. Um, we're probably sleeping or something, I don't know. Um, mm -hmm. May have Tooth join us as well, even though, you know, he's an MMA guy. Might have Rash. I mean, Chelsea lost. We want Rash on the show now. Because Chelsea have lost back-to-back. -back. I want on. Exactly. I want to know what's going on. <laughs> he, he was so eager to come on when they were winning. But, you know... They've lost back to back now, so I want answers. Um, but yeah, we may or may not have a couple more in the man them joining us, but we shall see. Uh, we're going to delay the North London derby. Hopefully, Mr. K.A. joins us. So I'm going to start off with the game that happened between Chelsea and Man City. Um, one nil victory away for Man City. Um, brilliant performance from them. Um, some outstanding um, performances from the likes of Bernardo Silva, Gabriel Jesus. And it was a real team performance. Performance truth um, surprised us because we all predicted a Chelsea win. We thought Chelsea, you thought Chelsea were going to win comfortably. I think Mr. K.A. and I thought it was going to be a little bit closer. But Man City came out and said, we are still the team to beat. What did you think of the game? I was so disappointed with the way Tuchel set up this Chelsea side. To be honest, um, can you hear that? Hmm? Can you hear that? What's up? Like bear beeping. Nah. These 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 guys on the petrol thing is getting out of hand. <laughs> <laughs> one second, one. People, if you didn't know, all our fans are in Europe and in America. Um, one second, I'll get back to I'll get back because this is madness going. I can hear that. <laughs> I heard that one, yeah. Like I'm at a few moments later. People were back, back to <laughs> back to regular viewing. I think the truth is wanted to see if you could witness a murder. <laughs> <laughs> They're about to start war on uh, what we're thinking, man. Hey, get oh. the I'm telling you, I'm telling you, but um. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, as I was saying, Man City, Ch- um, I was I was so disappointed with the way our two shots set up Chelsea. There's one thing I always had in the back of my mind. I love the way Chelsea have been playing this season. As I said, I've always thought that Tuchel has found the correct balance between attack and defence. This game, he did not find the correct balance in attack. Chelsea was scared to attack, unfortunately. And they got caught having a back five instead of a back three. When you're playing 3-4-3, you do not want to be caught having a back five because it's so hard to get out. You need to have a back three and your wing backs pushing up. Or they got caught flat back five, you know, that left the wing back stuck in their position. And you know what Man City said? Um, Reigns for Pep Guardiola, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Because he doubled down on what he loves. He said, you know what we're going to do? We are going to keep possession no matter what. It wasn't beautiful to watch in the first half. It was literally just attack and defense. Man City weren't really going anywhere. There were hardly any chances. It was literally attack versus defense. And they said, we are just going to wait and wait and wait until Chelsea make a mistake. And lo and behold, early in the second half, they did. Because it's hard to concentrate against a team that's just keeping the ball. Mm -hmm. Literally just keeping the ball. And they broke them down. And then the game opened up. And that's when it actually became a decent game. Um, Credit to the City defense. I thought they um, held firm. You know, Chelsea started to come to the fore, but City still had their chances. But credit to man like Diaz that, that Rashford was trying to get onto, like he's not like Diaz ain't a baller. I was mm-hmm. like, what are you doing? And I said, and I told him, I was like, don't, don't disrespect Diaz. He's a baller, isn't it? Don't disrespect him. So credit where credit is due. Um, well done, Pep. Well done, City. It was a very, very good performance. You know, also, as I said, Chelsea were, just, were as bad as City was good. No, 100%. And I think you summed it up quite well. What did you think of two shot change? Because obviously you said the 3 4 3, but it wasn't 3 4 3 for this type of, for this game. It was, uh, it was 3 5 2 because yeah. he went, with the two, he went yeah. with the two strikers up front in Lukaku and Werner and he tried to solidify the midfield play in uh, Kante, Kovacic, and Jorginho. And it, I don't know, I, I, I found it weird purely because why if it ain't broke don't fix it uh, yeah. sort of thing like what I know I know it's Man City and I know it's Pep and he was probably thinking because Pep doesn't really have a striker and the movement and whatnot probably yeah, that extra midfield legs in midfield but I think he should have just stuck to his gun and the brown playing team of Werner like. <laughs> I don't I don't know why why Tuchel let that goal gas him up that he scored against where he scored again. It was Aston, Aston Villa. Villa. Yeah. In the in the League Cup. I don't know why he let that goal gas him up about Werner and he wanted to give Werner confidence. Look, just he's a dead horse, man. Just put him down. Put him <laughs> down. Leave him on the bench. Leave him for the for the Carabao Cup. Leave him for the you know FA Cup early rounds. You don't want this guy to be on the pitch when it comes to when it comes to serious games. It, it didn't make sense to me at all. I'm like, did, like, bro, listen, I love a trier and he works hard. He does. He does. He, he does, he does make uh, a back four or back five sit deep yeah. so they can't, can't get him behind. But he has no confidence, no confidence whatsoever. So throwing him to a game of this magnitude against the English champions, that I think that was a little bit of naivety from, from, from Tuchel there. He should have stuck to what, what he knew, and I think it could have been a, a, a different outcome. And you got to look at the game because Chelsea only had five shots in the whole game, nothing yeah. on target. That that just goes to show how good City were. They they pressed them high, suffocated them. Jorginho couldn't really get on the ball. Chelsea yeah. couldn't get out. And as mm. much as it was a deflected goal by he- Jesus, Chelsea didn't have anything in the game. They weren't a threat. The fat man, again, goes missing in the big game, just like he did yesterday in the Juventus game. He was non-existent, as usual, as I keep saying every single time. But, you know, we're not going to get into him too much because it was the whole team. It wasn't on him. It was the whole team that didn't get up for it. And I think you can't... Do, and I'm bringing the Juventus game for a reason because it was a complete contrast to the, the Man City game because Chelsea were the team that were pressing. Chelsea were the team that had most possession. But Juve, Chelsea, Chelsea, in a certain to a certain extent, they sat back, 
They didn't um, give them any space. Chelsea couldn't really create anything. I think the fat man had a header and a shot, a shot that you should have scored, but you know, it's a big team, big game. He's not going to score. Um, and they countered them. And Tuchel, I think Tuchel came out at the end of the uh, end of the match and said, I don't know what was going on. I don't know why we weren't shot. Is, uh, it's a bl- I see it as a blip. But you, from a coaching standpoint, are we seeing a little bit of frailty in two shows? Is it just, you know, it's one of them, so, one of one of them things? So this is my fear. So this has always been my fear when you play three at the back. When you get you when teams know that you're playing three at the back, there is something that you can do to make three at the back very, very hard to score with. And there's a common denominator that they played, um, that they had versus Man City and UV. They struggled to create chances. Now, what you do when you have three at the back, you pack out the midfield. You literally pack out the midfield, you make a hard to break down, and you make sure that you don't mind giving the ball to the wing backs if they're um, high up the pitch. You let them have the ball, but you be compact in midfield, you get numbers back, and Three at the back is very good on the counter attack. Mm. Very good on the counter attack. They're very good at transitional, but what they're not, what it's not good at doing is breaking teams down. And um, this is the struggle that I knew, I knew it was gonna happen. I, I honestly thought Tuchel would get the balance right, but it's just that's the one frailty. Um, we saw it with Conte when he came to Chelsea when he switched to three four three, um, three at the back. It mm. works. That's for four season. Next season, everyone knew. Look at us. Arteta, at the end of the season, it worked. We got a trophy. Come the next season, everyone knew. The three at the back is a, is a um, formation to catch teams by surprise. Mm. It is not a formation where you use consistently. And all teams in the end end up, you know, leaving it alone. We left it alone. We went back to our formation. Um, City try at times, but we know what they're going to play. They're going to play 4-3-3. Liverpool try at times. The good managers know it's not a consistent formation to try all the time because it's Mm. got a huge weakness. And I want to see if Tuchel realises the weakness and changes it up quickly. Because if he doesn't, it's a slippery slope. Because you said something in terms of Lukaku as much as I think he's improved and I like him, he needs to get chances. Yeah. If you starve him off that ball, it's useless. I saw the old Lukaku come back against City where the ball was bouncing off him. If you starve Lukaku, <laughs> <laughs> if you starve Lukaku off the ball, then the old Lukaku comes back. You can see that. When mm. you give him the ball and he's a focal point, he's, he's back to being a monster. But starting off the ball, you see the literally Man United Lukaku come back. And no, it's not the Man United Lukaku, it's just Lukaku, bro. No, 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 the Man United <laughs> Lukaku. And then you, you fully under, you understand. So I want to see if Tuchel is able to, you know, get to grips with the situation and, you know, nip it in the bud before it's too late. I think they need to change formation, but I'd love to see. I would love to have seen what Rashford has said. Oh, it would have been interesting, but unfortunately, he's not here. Uh, and no one can't say I didn't send him the location because I sent it in the group, bruv. He just didn't turn up because Chelsea didn't win. Um, but I think Chelsea will bounce back. I, I think it was just a blip. I think Tuchel will be able to, to, to sort it out. And obviously, they've got Southampton at home, so um, we'll see what happens. Um, but in terms of Man City, obviously, a fantastic performance away at Chelsea when everyone was saying Chelsea were probably going to win the game and City no centre forward. So they're probably not going to do anything. And it, it, the way that Pep went about it, it, it was the right way. But then fast forward to Tuesday, um, they go away to PSG. Yeah. <laughs> and we saw what happens when you don't have a centre forward. I know you weren't too happy with the fact that he didn't start Gabriel Jesus. Yeah. Um, but PSG sat back soaked up the pressure, defended with seven players and just a gay top bins um, and then obviously Lionel the GOAT uh, <laughs> doing what Lionel does but um, <clears throat> in terms of 
the PSG game yeah. and the lack of strikers, do you think it's a case of they need a number nine or do you think that if he actually played Jesus in his position, people wouldn't be calling for a centre forward? They, he just needs to give Jesus more chances. Like, I know people say Jesus ain't clinical, but he needs to have a run of games. Who, what striker is going to be clinical if he's known as a super sub or a guy that comes in one game and gets dropped the next? Like, I'm sorry, yeah, but for me right now, there's no point of playing Raheem Sterling over Gabriel Jesus, personally, unless he's playing on the wing. Mm. Playing on the wing, it's okay. But why play Sterling as a false nine when you have Jesus? Like, am I missing something? Because that chance that they had when yeah. Sterling... Surely Jesus was putting that in the back of the net. Surely. Or if he's not there, surely he's following up. You get me? So why does Pep feel the need to do this? Is he trying to be too smart? And this is why... But, but, we, but we know Pep does shit like that. We know... know as, it. as much as I get praised him for the Chelsea performance in terms of doubling down against PSG just proved his, I don't know if it's I don't use the word arrogance or ah, he's not naive and he just no, he's arrogant bro he's, he's to arrogant be, and stubborn yeah just just trying to be too smart and, it, and it's it's a, I don't know if it's, it's not annoying to me because I don't want City to win but it's like for as an Arsenal fan, I don't want to see Arteta copy the same kind of shenanigans. Play people in their position. I mean, you did that against, what, what was it, against Villarreal in the Europa League? Was it yeah, the first leg? Yeah. Exactly. Play people in their position. Let them gain confidence in their position. And Jesus must be thinking, I scored against Chelsea, had a good game, because he did play very well. Yeah. Um, I get dropped against PSG. He must be thinking, wow, what have I done? Because if that's a girl, girls aren't getting dropped. So, it's, yeah, it's, no. it, it's true. It's true. If it's a girl, he doesn't get dropped. If they would have been successful in getting sugarcane, he mm. wouldn't get dropped either. So, I, 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 it's a weird one with Pep because, uh, I said, it's his arrogance, his stubbornness. I want to prove to everybody I don't need a striker to go yeah. and win the big games and yeah. to win the big trophies. And, and, and don't get me wrong, you need that if you if you want to be assess, as successful as he has been. But, bro, he did the same thing at Bayern when he was playing Philip Lahm in centre midfield and Alaba in centre midfield. Um, Barcelona, he was doing that nonsense as well, playing mashed potato at centre-back and Yara mm-hmm. at centre-back. Like, he, he always... It's like... Do you know what it is? I think he gets bored and he's like, let me try and do something. Because at this moment in time, yeah, if you're a re- if you're a student of football, you a lot of people have Mourinho and Klopp ahead of Pep in terms of what they've achieved with the teams and the players that they've had. And mm-hmm. it's like this guy's basically trying to go out there and say, I'm gonna. I'm gonna I'm gonna win the league with my goalkeeper as a top assister <laughs> and 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 my, my centre midfield as a top goal scorer and prove that I'm I'm the best no matter what. And it's like Bridget, just relax. Like it's not that deep. Like you're not professor, yeah. you're not Einstein. Just like he, just do do what you've been doing, innit? He believes for me at the moment in time, Pep believes is his own hype. Um I think he's arrogant in the sense that he doesn't believe managers like Mourinho or Klopp are above him, while the reality is he hasn't done anything without Lionel Messi. Exactly. I know people say, yes, but um, well done. He's a top manager, and a top manager should be able to spend £1 billion and win the league four times out of three times out of four years. Mm Mm-hmm. You can't you look you can't spend a billion pounds and then say oh anything less than that is 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 successful and he still hasn't won the Champions League so well there you go this is it and, and obviously we we move into because I said as we said last week it's a massive week for Man City and we move yeah. into the game at Anfield um, against Liverpool Liverpool having a monster game against Brentford. On the weekend, like that game was br- that game was brilliant. I know it was amazing. 
<laughs> it was <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> coming out with a draw, whole time Brentford. Like you should, you, you the one that said to me, oh, I give Brentford too much risk. Bruv, this is why, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Look, in fairness, that game should have been out of sight. Salah, uh, Mane missed some, some guilt, especially the one where Salah was through mm. and he, he, he tried to put it over the keeper and it went wide, or was it I one I, of the ones? I, 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 didn't, I didn't see the game live, I only saw the highlights. Yeah, he, there's one where he was through and he tried to put it over, I think, and he put it wider and it went over or something. I can't remember fully, but yeah, that game should have been out of sight. But credit Brentford for. for or sticking with it, boy. It hundred percent, bruv. It's that right, little look. I told you this is why when you don't know, getting upset about Arsenal losing, I was like, bruv, just come up from the championship. Like Brentford, Brentford played good football. No, um, no, no. <laughs> but um, obviously three three, and then they got a fantastic result in um, in midweek against Porto five one away. And it's never easy to go away to to Porto, even though Liverpool seem to love going away to Porto. Like they always <laughs> seem to beat them whenever when, whenever they really play them. Well. So. Huh? It's huge. It's never. It's never like a two nil or one nil. They they give them beatings, man. Freaking hell! <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm telling you. And so we fast forward now to this Sunday, massive game: Liverpool versus Man City at Anfield. Um, everyone thinks that this game's straightforward in terms of that because it's at Anfield. And I'm like Liverpool have, in their last five games, not Anfield, but their last five games against City, they've only won one. Yeah. So it's it's not it's not it's not a done deal. But when we look at Liverpool, is Klopp's Liverpool tailor made to play against this Man City side? No, just from what I saw against last week against Chelsea, because I feel that City now has got that strategy where they're going to be like, we are going to keep the ball. We're going to go backwards, forwards, backwards. No matter how long it takes, we're just going to keep the ball and we're going to run Liverpool into the ground because they're eventually going to break. Because Liverpool defensively this season have not been solid. Mm-hmm. Teams have got, and <clears throat> this is the kind of shocking thing because everyone thought Van Dijk's back, uh, Liverpool would be solid defensively, but that just hasn't been the case. Last week, I don't know if you saw it. I don't know if you saw it, but there's a time where at the end of the game, Van Dijk was actually looking around, saying, "What the f- is going on around here?" Like, <laughs> <laughs> like it felt foreign to him. He's like, "What is going on around here?" Why? Like he was confused. Like it's like he was lost. He was um lost control of his back line. So, yes, this Liverpool team is not the same Liverpool team from two years ago. They are easier to get at. And I think Man City have got a blueprint now to deal with these kind of counter-attacking teams where they're just going to keep the ball. It may be boring to watch, but they're going to keep that ball till sunset. So, yeah. Different. I, I, think, I think Liverpool have a good chance against this Man City side. I think I the, difference, I the, 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 the difference between Liverpool and Chelsea, I think Liverpool's intensity... Um, and the way in which they're going to go about it, especially being at Anfield, especially with it being at Anfield, I think it's going to cause um, Manchester City more problems, especially if 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 Pep goes in with the same front three that he did against PSG. I definitely feel they can get something out of this game. I don't think he will. I don't think he will. I think I think uh, Jesus will come back. And I think he will be a threat. Yeah, I think Jesus will, will come back into the side, but I still think this Liverpool team can get out of this Manchester City side. I don't think this Manchester City side is as solid as 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 everyone thinks it is. And I think Van, I think if Van Dijk and Matic play together, I think in this big game, I think they'll be all right. Trent's out, so that makes it even better for Liverpool defensively. <laughs> um, because they, they can actually... Obviously, James Milner will be down that side, but we know James Milner's a better defender than Trent. Um, yeah, obviously, what... Milner gets I don't like Milner against Sterling or Milner against Jesus. I don't, no. Milner, Milner doesn't have... I know he's a smart player, but that yard of pace is going to eventually tell. Oh, no. Oh, of course it is. But I'd rather have Milner versus Sterling than Trent versus Sterling. It's, it, yeah. It, yeah. Like, it's just, that's no contest, in it? Depends, uh, how do they create? Hmm? Well, this is it. That's the, that's the other side of it. 
because with Trent gone, obviously the whole crossing in the box and whatnot, that's going to be. But if but if uh, Man City are going to have the ball, Trent would have been going forward anyway. Let's be honest. Mm-hmm. So if Trent's not going forward, he's literally you're playing with ten men. So you you, you might as well play James James Milner there. But I just think with Salah with Mane, I think especially Salah down. Who's the left back? Who's the left back? Yeah, Robertson. left back uh, with Cancelo playing at left back. Not because Cancelo is a bad defender, but because he's going to be so fixated on going forward. I think Salah can get in there. Um, yeah. I think Firmino will obviously play that false role. So I think that that will that will that will cause uh, Ruben Diaz and Laporte problems. Firmino played in midweek, so I don't think he's actually going to. Start. Are you thinking he's going to play Jota? I think he's going to play Jota. Fair enough. If Mane is the one that's going to have a difficult time because even though City lost 2-0 in midweek, bro, Neymar never got no change out of Kyle Walker, bro. <laughs> no change out of Kyle Walker. And I can't see Mane getting anything out of it. I think the, the crucial part for me, for yeah. Liverpool, is who plays in that midfield. Obviously, we know the donkey is going to play, um, but then it's who plays with him. Does he play Kaita and Thiago? Does he pl- yeah. bring in... Huh? I swear Thiago, is Thiago back? I heard he's going to Oh, miss, was he injured? I heard he was going to miss two weeks. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah. Cause Cause I, know, I, know, I know that Curtis Jones you played against... Um, yeah, I know. Against I uh, in midweek. I don't think Thiago is fit. He might be. I just don't know if he's fit to play. Mm. Yeah, but, Thiago, yeah, Thiago's not playing. Okay, so what are you looking at then? You're looking at Hend- uh, Fabinho, Henderson, and then either Keita or Curtis Jones. I think they probably have to play Curtis Jones for a little bit of creativity in that midfield, yeah. um, r- rather than Ke- Keita. I, I, I think I think Liverpool got a, got a, got a good chance. It's going to be frigging difficult. We uh, are playing Man City is all, all, always difficult, but I, I don't know. I think I think Liverpool can um, definitely get a result against um, against um, Man City. But we'll see. We'll see. It's going to be a massive game for the weekend. Big games just keep on rolling in. Um, but moving on, we are going to move on to let the truth celebrate um, Arsenal's victory in the North London derby, a 3-1 demolition of Tottenham Hotspur. Um, goals from Smith Rowe, from Aubameyang and from Saka. The game was over in 35 minutes, let's be honest. Um, truth, as I said, Arteta in, bruv. Uh, demolition of Tottenham in the North London derby is a massive game where Arteta's job was on the line. Give us your thoughts on gonna... that excellent performance and that masterclass from Arteta against Tottenham Hotspur. Like, I'm going to keep it sweet. I'm going to keep it sure. I'm going to keep it real. Okay. First of all, I told you if there's anyone deader than Arteta, it's Tottenham. They were tailor made there to just go there and get a beating. This Tottenham side has more. Pro- when everyone was saying Tottenham were top of the league, three solid 1 0 wins, I said, guys, look at the underlying numbers. Look at the stats. Don't look at the results. Look at the stats. I did say it. Uh, they say they were flattened to deceive. And what's happened since? Three games, three goals conceded in each game. You know, one scored. So they were they were there for the taking for us. I will, and I keep on telling everyone, our, our first 11 is solid enough to challenge for top four. I honestly believe that. Don't get me wrong. Well done, Arteta, for getting the guys up for the North London derby. If you can't get up for the North London derby, then you should just leave. Um, there's a there's a few things I liked. As I said, I liked the um, first eleven apart from Xhaka, but he did have a good game, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get onto him. Um, he's he gives you that one game a season where he gives you a seven out of ten. So credit to him, he did have good. But then even in that game, he still did some stupidness. So so it's not it wasn't a fault with performance. Um, I love. I'll tell you what, I didn't think I'd love him as much, but Ramsdale, being an Arsenal fan, you can see his passion. Mm. Yasu, again, just has, keeps on having good games. Yeah, he looked good. Two, two things that he did in that game, that if Bellerin was playing, um, Tottenham would have scored. 
The one where, oh, who had the shot? I can't remember who had the shot. Someone had a what, shot. And Ramsdale parried it out. Yeah, yeah. Someone had a shot outside the box. And, um, I and Ramsdale son. saved it. I think it was Son. Ramsdale saved it. And then um, Tom Yasu was first to react, cleared it away before thing was onto him. And then again, when Mora shot and thing hit on the bar, who was there? Tom Yasu, he's, he's alert. If that was better in, that's two goals. Mm. Different game. So I like that. It's all coming together. But, and a big but, and this is why we can't get carried away. This is why I will keep on saying Arteta's not the man. 3 0 up at 35 minutes. You need to put your foot on the throat. You need to put your foot. It's a North London derby. You need to be looking at humiliation. You cannot let your team settle for 3-0. You cannot let them come out with the attitude that this game is done. Let's just manage the game. Go for the throat. Kill one of your rivals off right now. Get your goal difference up. I was so annoyed because what I would have done as a manager, I would have brought on hungry players that's going to make the, the team hungry. He left it so late to make changes, you know? And it all and it's all starts. And there were the defensive leadership. changes, weren't they? Yeah, yeah. It was, it, was, it was annoying, and it starts from the leadership under. Well, it starts from leadership from the manager, but on the pitch, we were going through the motion. I, I, I could imagine the instructions were let's manage the game instead of let's go for the throat. Arsene Wenger would have been, been let's go for the throat. You know, Alex Ferguson, let's go for the throat. Three and a half at thirty five minutes. I was, I was really annoyed after that. I was really, really annoyed that we let Tottenham even have a breath back into that game because they did score. Mm. It should have been a 3-0. Because it wasn't 3-0, like, I, he's still, he's got to go. He's got to go. I do not care. He's got to go. He's not the man because if you can't get that mentality in the players, that's a concern. I need that mentality in my team. You know, can't be letting your, your arch rivals off the hook when, when they're free. Nah, I'm, I'm not about that. I'm not about that. I mean, it was a fantastic start to the game. Um, you lot could have had four or five in that first half. Four, five, six, let's be honest. Mm-hmm. Um, better passes into into the forwards and you lot could have been five or six up. And I 100% agree with you. Um, in the second half, you lot obviously slowed down. He was going through the motions and he could have made the changes a lot sooner. Brought on hungrier players. I don't know why Pepe and Lacazette didn't come on. Uh, it didn't. It didn't make sense to me. And obviously Tottenham. Tottenham did. Um, did get the goal back from Son. And, and Harry Kane should have had a penalty. Yeah. Um, um, obviously he had a free header in the first half as well. Mm. Um, yeah. In the second half, Spurs looked a lot better. So I can understand why you're concerned because. Is as as far as the game is concerned, you don't let stuff like that. You don't let it drift. Exactly. You don't, you don't let it drift. You, you know, I mean, it's not like Man City, where Man City will just pass you to death and mm-hmm. just keep the ball, and it's like three 0 game over, pass, pass, yeah. pass, training ground. Like Tottenham were getting back into the game, and had had Ramsdale never not made that save and tipped it onto the bar and it went in, it would have been a very interesting last. I think that was like five minutes before the end. Yeah. I, think, I think it would have been a very interesting last five minutes um, before um, to, towards the end of the game. So I get you, but at the end of the day, Arteta has gone on a run. He's he's won all the games since the inter- yeah, he has won all the, he's won all the games since the international break. Um, up next is uh, Brighton away, which should be an uh, uh, interesting game. Uh, I think he'll be in a bit harsh, calling for it, calling for his head. He's done. He's done what was necessary. He's done what was asked of him, and it wasn't one nil to the Arsenal. He managed to get three, so I think it's a little bit harsh to be saying he still needs no, to go. No. If it was three one against Brighton, I would have been happy. But it was against Tottenham. They were there for the t- Tottenham right now are the worst team in the league. Because, well, not sure the worst team, second worst team in the league. Because Nuno, we know how Nuno's gonna play. We know how Nuno's gonna play. So, and they were there for the taking. Harry Kane don't want to be there. <laughs> Harry Kane don't want to be at Tottenham. So they're playing with their best player. They're there for the taking. There are so many things wrong. I I need to see that killer mentality. 
it, you have to have that killer mentality because no other. T- if that was the other way around, you think Tottenham are letting us off the hook? Nah. Well, <laughs> under Nuno, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the thing. I, I honestly believe that even under Nuno, the players would be like, you know, your likes of Harry Kane, your sons would be like, no, let's go for the throat. Like they, like they did at um, Man United last season. Hmm. You know, go for the throat. Humiliate them. Embarrass them. I can't have no nice manager, no nicey nice because when it comes to the games where you have to be tough, you won't be able to get it out of you. The games against Brighton away, you know, these, these games are what's matter now. The Tottenham game is gone. The next game is Brighton. If we lose or draw that, um, you know, there's the, the win against Tottenham doesn't mean anything. Mm. So we need that killer mentality to go into the Brighton game. So that's what I'm concerned about. So at the moment in time, I am nervous about the Brighton game, especially because we don't even have a good record there. No, you don't. <laughs> yeah, your record there isn't great, and Brighton are in good form. To be fair, exactly. um, were they like? like in, are they still in the top four? I think they're still in the top four in the league. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, got a massive result um, against their arch rivals, Crystal Palace, scoring mm-hmm. in the last minute, exactly. something like that. So now nah, they're, they're in decent form. Um, in terms of <laughs> quickly, as a Tottenham, right? Because like, right, hold tight, expressions, bro, because. Like every time I was in the school, I was on his stream, like just cracking up, bro. Because this guy, bro, this guy was looking. Like, <laughs> you, you know when you know when someone just had enough, bro, and they just really hey, for the, for the life to end. I felt so bad. I was watching that. Yeah, I, was, I forgot to send it to you, but I was watching that. I felt so bad. This guy actually looked like he gave up on life, man. <laughs> <laughs> Um, like, I'm not gonna lie, it's hard being a Spurs fan to be honest, but the way how they were in bar- like, truth, obviously, I know you're an Arsenal fan and whatnot, but when you when you look at the game, when I look at the game from a neutral standpoint, I don't know what Tottenham went out there to do, to be honest. I think they literally turned up and said, We've got a shit record against Arsenal, so we're just not gonna do anything, we're just gonna let Arsenal do what they want for the first half, the first, for the first half. And then in the second half, we're going to make it look like we're trying, get a consolation goal, and let's get the fuck out of here. That is exactly what it looked like from Tottenham. But um, from your perspective, bro, Nuno, bruv, like, he's under pressure already, and it's only been five games. He he did it to himself because... I, I think we discussed it last season when we were talking about Wolves a few times, that Nuno may have just hit a wall because it's just like the, it's just like the three four three formation. When everyone knows what you're gonna do, you need to come up with a plan B. And I, I'm sure you know you're gonna bring this up um, when we're talking about Ole. You can't keep on playing the same way every single game. And the tactics against us was weird. They wanted to be so direct. And I see I see what the issue is when you have when you go to a team like Tottenham, any of the any of the big six. And then you say, let's play this way. And the players are like, we're good players. We, we want the ball. And, and, and I don't know how you are. I know you were a defender. But when I was back in school, I always wanted the ball. I always wanted the ball. I, feel, I wanted to be in control of the game. When you go and you come from walls where, you know, you're down there and your idea is to play counter-attacking all the time, it doesn't work. And this is the same disconnect I feel is at United as well where you have good players, maybe Ole has a strategy to his counter-attacking, but then the players are like, we're good players, we want the ball. So there's a disconnect there. Mm. And um, it's the same disconnect at Tottenham. They had a strategy to go long, but they weren't comfortable doing it. They weren't comfortable, I didn't look happy doing it. So Nuno has to change up quick because we know Levy is a, is a trigger man. <laughs> it, it, <laughs> bro, listen. If Levy realizes he's not getting in Europe, bro, man, man will pre pull the trigger. And it's not long, bro. Like mm-hmm. this is it. This is it, bro. Like he'll he'll go on a mad one. And, and this is the thing. Like I don't understand. He wanted to go look, bro. Harry Sugarcane was getting eaten up by the seaside Senderos, bro. I like, don't hey, put respect <laughs> in his name, bro. Put respect in him because he ate. He, he had Kane in his pocket, man. <laughs> Um, Sugar Kane got nothing out of Ben White. Ben, ben White had a good game, bruv. 
Obviously, Sugar Cane doesn't want to be there. But the thing for me was, and Jamie Redknapp analyzed it on Sky Sports. Yeah. Bro, the midfield, bro. <laughs> and Deli Ali said, bro, we are pressing high. And that is it, bro. We're not, we're not, <laughs> we're not checking back. Oh, we're just man. pressing high. And leaving Hoiberg to deal with everything, bruv. Like, <laughs> it was crazy. Like, bruv, I, I, I don't think... Look. <laughs> bruv, literally, like, in that first 15 minutes, if I was a manager, I'd be pulling my hair out. I'm not lying, because yeah. you literally had five men with four Arsenal defenders. Exactly. Hoiberg, yeah. like, out left somewhere. And then mm. the back, the back line, brother. Like the amount of times, yeah, Arsenal counterattacked, and it was like three on two, four on know. three, five on four. Like it, it, it was crazy. And I, I can't see how Nuno sent out, knowing how defensive he is, because obviously he's a C Tech Mourinho. <laughs> and I can't see how he sent them out there and said the press high, bro. I think the players just said North London derby, we're gonna attack. And and we're gonna leave Hoiberg to do all the defending. Like I can't see Nuno telling. Is that um, dangerous? Huh? That the players have taken it upon themselves to. That's dangerous. That's a dangerous precedent, boy. Of course it is, bro. Like Deli Ali looks disinterested. Endombele still feels violated because he didn't start at the beginning of the season. Sugar mm. Kane wants out, bro. Like Nuno's got some serious problems, bro. And like real talk, like Adama Traore can't save him. Like Adama Traore cannot save him. So I I, I don't know what he's gonna do. But obviously. Hmm? The writing on the wall for you because he's done. Listen to what you just said. Like that's all the influential players. So Endon Bele, he didn't play at the start. He was disrespected, and now you're not brought him back. So he's and everybody thinking, wait, you know, you didn't play him at the start. Now you want to use me because I had a good game. So he's got that in the back of his mind. If it starts going wrong, he's not going to run through a big wall for him. Kane doesn't want to be there, as we can see. He's he's going to keep costing them points because he's going to get a one on one, and it's going to be like. Huh? You know what? I can score this or I can shank it. <laughs> he's, he's, that thought's going through his head. The same thought before, he's like, I want records, I want goals. That's not going through his head no more. No, he's like, so I really want to score this. You got Ali, you know, he's got Pep's daughter about in his brains. He's, so he's just thinking about Pep's daughter. Um, who else? What that is. <laughs> um, he's not, who else? Who are you talking about? Um, um, what's it name? Uh, and, and Romero, Romero got disciplined by the club. He's thinking, "Raw, I just came in, and you guys are trying to discipline me because I went up, went off with Argentina." Um, Emerson's like, "I played, and then I'm dropped." This is, is it right on the wall for him? Is no, there a way? Done. Back him? He's done, bro. Um, <laughs> you know, if Nuno, if Nuno survives December, yeah, bro, yeah. Spurs want to get relegated. I'm not even. I'm not even joking. If Nuno survives, Spurs want to get relegated, bruv, because I can't see how he can survive with the negative football that's being played. Um, the players don't look happy. Obviously, Sugar Kane probably rubbing, rubbing off on the rest of the players. And the dead tactics, bruv. Like, don't get me wrong. They'll probably, actually, I don't even know if they're playing on the weekend. But they'll probably win on the weekend and everything will be all rosy. But if he, if he survived, like, I think if, if um, Spurs were to get a beating that they did against Arsenal, against another big club, or lose to like Norwich or something, bro, I think I think he's dead. I think he's dead food. Look, right? They'll 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 sack him and just like bring my, Ryan Mason back. <laughs> they, got, they got Villa on the weekend, so. Well, well, there you go, and and, and Villa and Villa are flying at the moment. So um, we'll see we'll see what happens with um with with Nuno and Spurs. Um, the main, the main event, the showstopper. <laughs> let, let, let me just get, let me just get my thoughts out of the way before people think I'm like flip flopping on Ole. So my thing with Ole is that I think he is. I don't want to be too harsh. I think he's getting away with murder. Um, that United team is too good, too good to be playing shit. That United team is too good to 
to be playing the way they play. They play in moments. They rely on individual, which is true, all true. Um, and Ole is getting away from him. The only thing I would say as onto his onto the fans is that I think you have to get behind him, unfortunately, because he has produced results. In terms of where United were under Mourinho, it was a miracle to get them the next season to finish in the top four because that team was broken, broken by Mourinho. And then to finish second the year after. And now, you know, with the team that you got, I'm expecting treble winning season. <laughs> <laughs> But let's talk about the Villa game. Um, let's let look. So we all know we all know to get we all know United before. I want to talk about one thing: Bruno Ronaldo. How do they go forward in terms of they don't work for Portugal, the penalty issue, and. As I said, just the performance. They they don't work for Port they don't work for Portugal. So how is Ole gonna get the best out of them? He's not. <laughs> He's not. <laughs> like, no, surely no, surely there's a way. Look, there isn't a way because they're too bruv. Bruno is not a midfielder, bruv. He's a center forward. He, like, he's a Firmino, bruv. But he does that. Firmino wants is that false nine that wants to facilitate, whereas Bruno wants to score the goals. They're never going to work, but Bruno has to bow down to Cristiano. At the end of the day, be it Man United, be it Portugal, bro, they could even be playing for Bournemouth. Ronaldo is 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 the guy, so it's never going to work. But because Bruno feels that because it's United and Ronaldo's come back. Bruno's like, well, I'm still the guy here. When everyone else knows Ronaldo's the guy, like he dictates what happens um, on the pitch, not you. Is that and correct? yeah, of course it is. Of course it is. The penalty, the penalty thing was, look, I had no issue with Bruno taking the penalty. His penalty mm -hmm. record is better than Cristiano's. Yeah. Bruno is the penalty taker. Cristiano yeah. wanted to take it because A, he was confident enough to take it, and B, because anywhere else he's been, he's the guy that takes it. He takes them for Portugal um, when Bruno's there, so I can understand it. Paul Pogba said, allow it. Go go back to, go, out, go outside of the edge of the penalty area because Bruno is our penalty taker. What we saw from Bruno is someone that tries too hard and wants everyone to think that he is the guy. That's why he sent the ball to the moon and back. Because this guy does what Jorginho does. He does what Lewandowski does with a little hop skip. He decided to put his foot through it and lever it and try and take off, take off someone's head top. The, press, the pressure got to him. The pressure, the, pressure, the pressure from Ronaldo wanted to take the ball. The pressure and shout out Martinez, bro. Every Martinez is... <laughs> is don't, please is, don't remind me about this because bruv, I cried. I cried. Emmy Martinez is a bad man, bruv. Man you. said, man said, Bruno, you're nobody, bruv. I want <laughs> Cristiano taking the penalty. Like, I don't want to deal with oh. you, bruv. You're mediocre, bruv. You're shit, bruv. Like, I want Chris, I want the Don Dada. I want Cristiano <laughs> Ronaldo taking this, bruv. And Bruno saw it, shit his pants, kicked the ball <laughs> over, and, 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 and that's, that's the end of it. Bear in mind, he played shit that game as well. Because he was mm. trying way too hard. Bro, Cristiano's come and Bruno's trying way too hard. Way too hard to try and impress people and be like, I'm the guy just as much as Cristiano's the guy. No, Bridget, you ain't won nothing to be trying to do that. So as far as I'm concerned, what Oli has to do is sit Bruno down and tell him, look, Cristiano's here. Not saying that it's the, the Cristiano Ronaldo show, but... I can't have you two competing against each other. I need you two working with each other. You are the midfielder. Cristiano is the centre forward. Your job is to facilitate as well as score. His job is to score. So you need to sort it out because you can't talk to Cristiano. His ego's too massive. Like the guys, and, it, and he has every right to be. So you've got to sit Bruno down and talk to him and say, look, 
I need you to do your best to facilitate as well as score and not just try and score. But unfortunately, Bruno, being who he is and the way how Oli has let him go on, he's just going to try and score. So it's never going to work. It's not going to work. I don't care about the assist against young boys. We lost that game. I don't care what was the other assist. I think the other assist against, against Aston Villa. I don't care about that because I'm not Aston Villa. West Ham in the league game. Um, I don't care about that because as we could see from last night and the Aston Villa game, they don't work. Um, do you think that Ole should have laid down the law on who's taking the penalty? Or, or did you think that it was, it was already being made Ronaldo being Ronaldo still yeah. said, yeah. So you think Ronaldo took it on yeah. his own? Ronaldo took it on his own. I think Oli would have made it very. I think if Oli didn't, then like, bro, he, I mean, he shouldn't be in the job anyway, but he shouldn't even be working with players if he hadn't, because that would have been one of the first, bro. The thing is, even if when, when Ronaldo came, it wasn't yeah. in his head, everybody was waiting for it. Mm -hmm. So he should have known because everyone was talking about it. Yeah. So I believe Cristiano in that situation basically said, you know what, I'm going to see what I can do. Um, Bruno already had the ball, but Bruno knows he can't really tell Ronaldo no because man will get banged up when they go away with Portugal. Mm -hmm. so, but, so that's why Labille had to step in and be <laughs> like, nah fam, allow it. Like, let Bruno do his thing. Bruno wouldn't tell him, look at Cristiano because he knows when they're away at Portugal, yeah. When I was poking him up one time, like he, he, he didn't want it, bro. But um, nah, I think Cristiano basically said that I, I'm gonna chance my arm, but it, it was not, it's not, it's not good to see. But yeah, Bruno, and I still, I still believe Bruno should still be taking our penalties, even now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. even now, I, I, I still, his, his record is better, and I, I, I prefer him, Cristiano, bro. Listen, you know. My thoughts on Cristiano, especially with penalties, bruv, when man tried to self-destruct and sabotage us winning the Champions League against Chelsea, bruv. So you know how I feel about him and taking penalties. So now, nah, uh, Bruno, for me, a oh, penalty taker. Like, I agree, because um, one thing you don't want to do when a player misses a penalty is take it away and just end his confidence. Dude. Especially a player like Bruno, who has been the man for a season and a half. Mm -hmm. you know, um, I think that'd be the worst thing to do. It'd be interesting to see who gets the penalty at when you guys got this weekend? Uh, we're at home to Everton. Everton, yeah. If you guys get a penalty at Everton, it will be very interesting to see. I, I, um, I, I, I think I mean, Bruno will take it. Um, I would hope. I would hope so. I think, as I said, um, anything else, and I think Social would have some real questions to answer, not just for the media within the team. Because the team would be like, as much as they love Ronaldo, we have a penalty. But they wouldn't. They wouldn't. This is the, this is the problem with the fans. The, it, I think if we get a penalty and Bruno picks up that ball again, I think the fans will be, there'll be murmurs. Yeah. There will be murmurs. And my whole thing is, is that Bruno's record is better, so support him. If Oli, if Ren, Cristiano Ronaldo picks up that ball and I don't see an argument with Bruno Fernandes, it just goes and tells me that Oli's a bottle job, bruv. He's just a bottle mm -hmm. job and he likes to pacify the fans. And that's why these frigging all these sexuals love him so much. <laughs> but Bruno should be taking the next penalty, 100%. One last question. I know or anything. Mm. Where, actually, two more. Where is Jaden Sancho? Jaden San Jaden Sancho, right now, yeah, is wishing that he could go back to Borussia Dortmund, bruv. No one told him bruv, how bad Oli is, bruv. <laughs> no one told him how bad the football was. Like, he, like, I don't, uh, listen, like, bro, when you, when you join Manchester United, right, and you're a Jadon Sancho type player, you mm -hmm. have to be prepared for Oli to kill your career. You <laughs> have to be, you have to be prepared for Oli to kill your career. Jadon is trying to do things that he did at Dortmund with yeah. the style that's not there. So the one-two touch, the um, high-octane football, the getting, the getting in behind, there's not much you can do because 90% of teams sit deep when they play Man United. So that's one difference between here and the Bundesliga. But the one-two touch and the, the high-octane football and the high press, bro, someone, someone could have told him because this, this, this is what's killing him right now. Oli and his lack of tactics and his no style 
is what's killing Jaden Sancho right now. And as I said, Jaden wants to be playing with the likes of Lingard, Martial, Donny, Pogba, like because he can play that type of football. When you put Jaden with Bruno, Cristiano Ronaldo, Greenwood, McMahonays, Fred, bro, there's no one two touch. It's get the ball, individual brilliance, and cross. Like, mm. That's not Jade, that's not Jaden's style. So at this moment in time, he's drowning because Oli is killing his career, bruv. Like Oli, Oli just told him, do Oli, you can see Oli said to him, do what you did at Borussia Dortmund. And Jaden's like, but I can't because I need the players and the style to be able to do that. And Ollie's like, just do what you did at Borussia, Borussia Dortmund. Oh, fuck freeze. I feel for him. I really do feel for Jaden. Um, as soon as Ollie gets sacked, um, we'll see the real Jaden Sancho. It's funny because we did say in the transfer show about Sancho, it could go one of two ways. And I, mm-hmm. and I, did, and I did maintain that he was going to have a hard start because I watched, I followed him very closely in Germany because I love watching him as a player. And I knew his weakness and players at Dortmund and his manager knew his weakness. Mm -hmm. And they said that Sancho should have finished his education before coming over here. So that was a worry. So let's see, he has to learn. He may have to reinvent himself. It may be down to him because it may be down to him. Ronaldo might need to help him, but he has to work out a way to become more effective I think defensively is an issue because against Villarreal, oh my gosh, that first Ooh. half. <laughs> that, first half <laughs> that, that felt like back in the day when I was watching Barcelona versus um, Arsenal at the new Camp. And you're just waiting for the goal to go in. Like, they just peppered you guys until the goal and... As you said, individual brilliance. Tell us what a strike means. Bad man goal. A bad man goal. Big goal. And then Ronaldo popping up in the right place at the right time. How long can this go on? I Fam. know you don't want it to, but how long Fam. can this go on? Fam. Bro, you, I, you know that I, think, I don't think there's a victory that's ever hurt me so much. I don't think there's been a victory that's hurt me so much. And it's because, bruv, do you know how demoralizing it is to watch a man with the rope around his neck? You <laughs> kick away the box that he's standing on, bruv, and man's feet just end up on the floor and he survives. Like, do you know how demoralizing it is, bro? Every time this man is going to die, bruv. Like, bruv, uh, uh, he survives, <laughs> bruv. Oh, man. Look, I think the, what, the biggest thing for me yeah. is that some of the fans that were sitting in the middle and some of the Oli sexuals are seeing what I've been calling for the past however many years mm. and they're starting to turn on him. That, for me, gives me a little bit of hope that this man's reign is coming to an end. It can't last. It cannot last. And I think it's one of them ones where the only way this man is going to go is if he... I think if he makes top four, he's still going to be in a job. The fans have to turn on him. They have to. No, do do you know what's going to make him go? I'm slowly starting to see the media start talking oh yeah and that uh, and, and bruv listen and uh, you look i i love gary neville as as, as I, when he's commentating on games i absolutely love it i hate when he talks about manchester united whilst ollie's there i hate it because even what he said he never called his name real never called ollie's name bro respect respect the neville because that's his boy like at the end of the day you don't at your family. Nah, 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 no, no, of course. Let's look, look, look. Rub, you're, you're in the media, right? Family or not, you need to call a man out when man needs to be called out, bruv. But you, you, did, you, did, you, you, but nah, did, say names because you nah, were saying nah, Mourinho's nah, nah, name. Nah, you nah, were saying nah, Louis nah. Van Gaal's name. You were saying David Moyes' name. Yeah, that's not his That's not his bruv. way. Not his I don't way. think, bruv, boys or not, you're, you're, you're a pundit. You're being paid to be neutral. You're not yeah. being paid, right, mm-hmm. to, 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 to support Ali, bruv. 
You're, yeah. It's for the best of the team. It's not about Oli, it's about Manchester United. And my man has been stealing a living for nearly three years now. Three mm. years, bruv. Man's been stealing a living and you still won't call man's name. Rio won't even talk about him, bruv. The only people that talked about him in the beginning when I was talking about him, Owen Hargreaves and Robin Van Persie. A man tried to chat shit about Robin Van Persie, bruv. Bruv, you sat on the bench your whole career. Robin Van Persie came to Old Trafford and won the league for us. You didn't win shit. Teddy Sheridan won us that Champions League, bruv. And Ton told you already, he's a cult hero. He's not a fucking legend at this club, bruv. I'm, 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 tell, I'm, I'm, tell, I'm saying this from now, but what I will say is the murmurs are starting to come. And mm. even though the, his, his friends aren't calling his name, they're saying little bits and pieces. But all these Man United fans out there, watch man like Craig Burley, tell it how it is. Go on ESPN, bruv. Watch man like Craig Burley absolutely destroy Oli and call him the fraud for what he is, bruv. Fuck Gary Neville, fuck Rio Ferdinand and them man when, when they're talking about Man United. Anyone else is fine, but when they're talking about Man United, go and watch Craig Burley, bruv, because man is destroying Oli. Even Paul Merson, Paul Merson has been saying the same stuff as well on Sky Sports. So mm. watch them guys, bruv. All these guys that got an affiliation with the club, don't watch them unless it's Van Persie or Owen Hargreaves because they're the only ones that are going to be real. Uh, but in terms of how long it can last, bruv, you, you know what fixtures are coming up. If he survives that, bro, <laughs> Oli, 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 Oli's going to be in a job for life if he survives this. If he survives, if, like, if he survives the run coming up, he, he is Teflon. He is Teflon. Yeah, no one's touching him. The one that the one thing I'll say that like, even me is getting to the bit where I'm getting. Don't get me wrong, I want Ole to stay. Like, of course you do. Get to the point where, just like Mourinho, after a while, you just want like United have good players. Like, as much as I hate you guys, I want to hate you guys while you're doing well. Mm -hmm. Because when you hate somebody when they're not doing well, it's like, what's the point? Like, it's not much to hate on. Like, this team should be playing. Oh, the Shelling. This team should be playing. Should be Shelling. Playing. It should be high-scoring games. I don't even care. I want, I want to see I want to see good games. Like, that Villarreal game, you just seen, you just, you're like, rah, you know how to get peppered. <laughs> Villarreal like, could have been 4-5 at half-time. It's mad. Like, the gay, are, the, and this is why the gay is Shout so out good. David, bro. Shout out David. My, my <laughs> don. I know, I know I criticised him last season, but David's looking like the David from the... 50, I think, it was, no, was it the 15-16? No, 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 but remember, this guy is good when he's saving shots. The problem with mm. the game is that when it gets, like, lulls and he's getting a shot, like, every, like, 20, 20, um, 15, 20 minutes, mm. that's when it gets a bit, you know, loopy. Mm. But because everyone's like, now, let's just go and attack United. He that's this is where the game comes into his own, but let's see what happens, boy. Um, that run coming up, we're gonna be talking about it all the way to November thirtieth. You know, two months of a you know difficult, difficult teams. I think it ends against us actually. I don't yeah, know home exactly, bro. Mad, mad run, and 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 it, and bro, it start, bro, it started in the Champions League, Villarreal, mm -hmm. and we got away with murder. As I said, shout out David De Gea. Um, shout out Alex Tellez, bruv. Shout out Jesse Lingard as well for the assist um, uh, 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 as well. But Villarreal, bruv. Villarreal would, um, if they had, if they had Chuck Wazy and Moreno, that game would have been over. That game would have been over in, 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 in the first half, bruv. Could you imagine? No, no, it would have been a massacre. Oli can't survive this, bruv. He cannot <laughs> survive this. If he does, then fuck me, bruv. Like, I need that judge that he's got. Honestly, <laughs> watch that today. Watch that today. Um, um, but uh, yeah, people. Finally, before we go, prem predictions. Um, truth over to you. Are they one by one, bro? Yeah, King King one's got a hat trick. Bam, this, bam, this is competition now. This is this is his level. <laughs> this is his level. Conference League. Hey, but yeah, another win for your boy. The truth. Um, it was a, it was a tight one because no, it was a horrible weekend. Yeah, we got loads of surprises: the Chelsea, the Man City, the Liverpool, the United. Boy, it was a 
It wasn't great, but I, the joke is I won by just getting two points. <laughs> I won by getting two points. I'll take it. Yeah, I'll take it anyways. So that's four wins for me. Two for KA. TJ is still waiting to get off the mark. We're waiting for TJ to get off the mark. Maybe, maybe this week. Just me and him this time. Maybe he might get one this week. Um, I don't think he will because I'm on it. But let's see what happens. And it's a perfect first game to start us off with. Man, wait. Did you guys not play Wednesday? Did yeah. Play yeah. And you're the first game. This scheduling is is yeah, it don't make no sense. It's mad this year. It's mad. Um. Yeah. United. Everton. Wait. I guess. I guess being at home helps. Both games are you know, at home help, but still, Man United versus Everton. Let's go with TJ. <laughs> one one. Two two. <laughs> the joke is, yeah, I, I can't even not give it no more because it sounds reasonable. <laughs> it sounds reasonable. Are you actually going to two two? Yeah, I'm going with two two. <laughs> <laughs> it's mad because I don't know what score is going to be. Two two. I don't know what score is going to be. Um, we always, especially Everton at home, bro. They always. Nah, you beat Everton at home. I'm going three one United. I'm going three one. You always beat Everton at home. Everton will probably score first, but you guys will. Ole, you guys forget what happened last year, you know. Yeah, remember you guys? No, <laughs> that was away. That was oh, the, really? yeah at home. Oh, it was a three three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, next game is Chelsea Southampton. Chelsea looking to get back. Um, I'm going to go three 0 I think I think they have to get some goals back in. So I'm going to go. I'm, three -nil. I'm going two 0 Chelsea. I normally go two 0 but I think I tell you what though, Southampton just they just keep on surprising, don't they? Yeah, they're, they're annoying. Hold on, who did they play? Oh no, but they lost to Wolves. Yeah, I know because they couldn't put the ball in the net, but they drew mm. United, they drew mm. against City as well. Yeah, I so, think I think I think Chelsea are looking to bounce back though. Yeah, I think I think that's the important thing. Um, Brighton, Arsenal, Brighton, Arsenal, TJ. We don't have a good record here. <sighs> One one. Mm. Yeah. I'm going one. I I think we'll edge it. I think we'll edge it two one. Yeah, I think we'll edge it two one. Yeah, I got two on up. Uh, Aston Villa, um, Tottenham, Aston Villa. It's so hard. Uh, I'm at... <sighs> I'm going two one Villa. Uh, two one Villa. Tottenham at home though. Two one Villa. Martinez is a, is a G. <laughs> Sorry, that guy's such a gangster. <laughs> I'm going to go, I'm going to go two one Tottenham. Ooh, really? Playing Thursday? Mm, yeah, I'm going to go two one Tottenham. Two one Tottenham. Going against your boy Leon. I think he might be back. Is he going to be back? He should be back. He's out for two weeks. Might come soon for him. Mm. I think he'll not back to the, after the international break. Well, they're not going to risk him. Nah. Last one, the big one: Liverpool versus Man City. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't have a, I don't have a score for this one. I I'm going to go. I'm going to go two two. Yeah, I was going to go one one. I was going to go one. I can't predict. No, I'm predicting Man City win. 
one nil Man City. <sighs> nah, I'm yeah. sticking with two two, bro. Two two. I honestly feel City are just gonna keep the ball, but I wouldn't be surprised if what you say Liverpool are just so potent under press. I just think Man City will handle the press better this time. Mm. Cool thing. There we go. So that's five results. Let's see who comes out on top. Next time, I'll make sure you remind me to tell, um, tell KA to post his prediction. Oh, yeah. But, bro, you should have you been on here, bro. should have been on here. It's not every day go to your bed. <laughs> it's, not, it's not every day go to your bed. Um, but, but people, that is it from us. Um, let us know what you think in the comment section. Will Chelsea bounce back? Is this just a blip or do you agree with the truth? Will Tuchel have to change tactics? Um, let us know what you think about the big game of the weekend. C- uh, Liverpool versus City. Will City dominate the ball and win or will Liverpool have something to say? Let us know what you think in the North London derby. Let us know if you want to celebrate the fact that Arsenal won. Is it still Arteta out or is it Arteta in? Uh, will Nuno survive Christmas? <laughs> will Nuno get to Christmas being um, top the manager? And um, let us know what you think about Ole. Um, can he survive this? Is Ole the witch doctor of all witch doctors? Right? Has he just got that judge that no one can seem to, to, to get rid of. Um, and uh, um, let us know your predictions as well in the comment section. And as usual, before we go, make sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Put a comment, put the comments in, people. We want to know, we want to interact. We would like to get in the interact with you lot. Like it, like it, and share, share, share. Get it out there. We are here and don't forget to join our social medias as well links are in the description i want to say thank you very much to my guy the truth thank you very much sir thank you my friend people listen to me very carefully if you made it this far in the stream it'll be tuesday afternoon coming out for you lot you do not want to miss Fury versus Wilder 3, our preview show. I'm not even guessing. It is going to be a madness. Hopefully, we should have all the man them on for that stream. We'll have the truth. We'll have tooth. We'll have ST. I will be there. Hopefully, we'll have Rash on there as well. It, it, <sighs> I don't think you understand if like if it's anything like our group chats yeah it's just going to be fire so put that in your day da- you know I'm just gonna be sending shots so you know <laughs> I'm gonna be sending for him look <laughs> I, I can't put no words into it I'm just saying put in your diary Tuesday afternoon I'm gonna this is how good it's gonna be I'm gonna premiere it so I'm gonna premiere it for four o'clock Tuesday afternoon um, so, so you lot can see it's going to be fire I'm telling you this you do not want to miss um, and obviously as well 40 Talk will be back next week and NBA will be coming as I said I apologise if, you if, if you're a football lot and you don't watch our, didn't watch our boxing one I apologise NBA I got the dates wrong we got a couple more weeks before it's back yeah. it will be coming it just won't be this week but NBA Talk We'll be back as well. But um, people, stay safe. Be well. Don't forget, Tuesday, 4 o'clock, Fury versus Wilder Free Preview Show. Don't miss it. And we shall see you very, very soon. Peace.